There is a ton of information out there about ball pythons. Care, breeding, genetics, not just ball pythons, but really any kind of reptile. There's also a ton of competing information, which might mean that it's maybe just a different way of successfully doing something, or it could be misinformation. How do you sort through it all? Today, I'm gonna to try to help. Why are you, did you go through my shirt thing? Welcome to The Green Room, I'm Bob Bledsoe. Today we're talking about how to wade through all of the information and misinformation about ball pythons or reptiles in general, or any animal for that matter. If you're new, how do you know what's good information and what's bad information? Behind the camera is my brother Kent, Hi. who has been known to pick up and then regurgitate some really bad information about snakes. Kent, tell me, how do you determine what information to keep in your brain about snakes? If it's a story about a snake eating somebody, or maybe a snake sizing up their owner while they sleep, I hold on to that information because a story like that, you can't make that up. I mean, I think you can. Also, triumphant stories of survival. I remember those as well. Like what? Just, just different ones, you know? Now just tell me one triumphant story that you can remember. Okay, I will. There was a guy who had a snake and all his neighbors were like, you shouldn't have that snake because it's gonna eat you. And then one day the snake was eating the guy and all the neighbors ran up because it was in the front yard and all the neighbors ran up and they were like, you snake, get away from him. And then the snake ran off and the neighbors were like, told you so. Kent, did you just make that story up like right now? No, you can't make a story like that up. You know, that's an overused saying and it's always 100% wrong because you can make anything up. I think we're gonna make this Kent's Corner for this week. Thank you for watching Kent's Corner, the internet's favorite sensation. I try to give the most accurate and complete information I can based on my experience and research, but I hope that I'm not the only person that you get information from because I could get something wrong or Maybe I do something differently than you want to do it. There are multiple ways of successfully caring for an animal. And as long as our animals are healthy and doing well, that's okay. So the first thing that I'll say is you want to get your information from a lot of different sources. Anybody can start a YouTube channel or a Facebook group or a forum. You know, I could start a forum called The Toucan Forum. And I could write all kinds of articles about toucans and post them up there and give all this information. And a new person would have no idea that I know nothing about toucans. Now, that's pretty common on the internet. There's a lot of forums like that. Usually those people don't know nothing about ball pythons. They know something, but they don't have a lot of experience and they haven't researched enough. So they've got a lot of misguided information. Um, and they are in turn misguiding a lot of other people. When I signed up for YouTube on, you know, Green Room Pythons for YouTube, they didn't ask me what my credentials are. YouTube didn't verify whether I was a scientist or a zoologist or a reptile expert, none of which I am uh, and, and don't claim to be. But the point is anybody can do it. So that's what makes it difficult sometimes to sort through all this stuff. On that same subject, I could start a group and call my group something that everybody can get on board with, like, Pit bulls are misunderstood, or pit bulls are lovers, not fighters. And a lot of dog lovers can get behind that statement. So they go, wow, I agree with that statement. I'm gonna join this group. And subconsciously, because you agree with that statement, you're gonna start agreeing with everything else that's in that forum. So just because a forum is named something that, uh, that you can get on board with, doesn't mean that that person knows what they're talking about necessarily. Um, and by the way, there's a lot of people that do know what they're talking about, but I want to talk about the problem, the problem issues. Also, you know, I could, I could start a thing that, that is all about, let's go back to toucans because I like the, the, um, 
weirdness of a toucan. Uh, maybe I should get a toucan, you guys. I should get into these. But anyway, the point is, you know, I could start something that's and, and say this is this, all the scientific research and science about toucans. Everything is based on science in this forum. And I could post all kinds of scientific evidence and whatever, but I could have an agenda. And so what I end up doing is posting scientific papers that have not been peer reviewed and excluding scientific papers that don't agree with my agenda. That's a really common thing for a non-scientist to do. Um, and it's really easy to do because there's a lot of conflicting science information, especially that non-peer reviewed stuff or whatever. And you can just weed through things and weed out things to, uh, to just promote your agenda. So you've got to be careful about that. that. These are all sort of difficult waters to wade through. So this is why it's important to get your information from a lot of different places. And really, the key here is learn as much as you can from a bunch of different places, a bunch of different people, and then you've got to sort of decide. Once you've heard enough information on a particular subject from different sources, you can go, okay, that seems credible. This seems believable. This seems to make sense to me. And this other stuff doesn't. And the other cool thing is you'll start to do that with, uh, the, you know, there are YouTube channels out there and, and uh, forums and things where you'll start to see a trend of misinformation of things where you've gone, okay, I've learned about this now and I'm pretty sure that this is accurate information that I'm getting over here from a bunch of different sources. This one says says this and this tends to be dangerous. So for instance, I'll, I'll give you a, an easy example. There's a person on YouTube that talks about tubs are great, I use tubs, keep your snakes in tubs. There's another person on YouTube that goes, don't keep your snakes in tubs, keep them in glass enclosures. I keep all mine in glass enclosures and they do great. And then there's somebody else on YouTube and this isn't true. I'm making this up, but there's somebody else on YouTube that says, uh, get, I, I keep, um, two snakes in my enclosure and you should keep them together because my snakes are best friends and they cuddle. So once you get into researching that information, you'll realize, all right, there are tons of people who are successful keeping their snakes in tubs. There are tons of people that are successful in keeping their snakes in glass enclosures. So maybe that's just a different way of doing things, even though there's a big argument about which is better. There's literally thousands of people all, the, all, all over the world that have healthy snakes in both. But this third piece of information, keep your snakes together because they'll become best friends and they'll cuddle, is bad information and just doing a little bit of research on that you can find out that ball pythons are not social animals and that cuddling that uh, occasionally people will claim will claim that their ball pythons do is actually just sort of battling for the hot spot or whatever the most comfortable place in the enclosure is at that time and they're actually stressed and they're kind of without literally fighting, they're kind of fighting for that spot by shifting around like that, but it looks like they're cuddling. So uh, that's pretty easy to, to suss out what information is correct and what's not in that particular case anyway. Hey everybody, Future Bob here, just editing the video and finding sort of mistakes. Uh, in that last example, I got a little bit carried away and lost my point, which was, if there's a content creator that you watch and you figure out that they have given multiple pieces of bad information, bad important information, not like wrong morph information, but but care advice that, that you find out later is maybe dangerous for snakes, um, stop watching that channel. Even if it's a fun channel to watch, it's probably best to not follow that particular channel or or not even a channel but you know forums or facebook pages or whatever stuff like that so just cut those out as soon as you realize they're giving bad advice just cut them out i think i'm gonna put ron back here you go buddy i'm gonna go back in your hide there you go you've been cruising around good boy thanks for hanging out with me buddy you were all over the place books i like books a lot but they're oftentimes outdated uh, the good news is, though, that you can be relatively sure that if somebody got a legitimate book deal from a publisher, not self-published, uh, that the publisher has vetted that person and they are an expert of some sort. Um, the thing is, though, like, 
This book, The Complete Ball Python by Kevin McCurley, or The More Complete Chondro, or this Reticulated Pythons book, these are all great books and I like them a lot, but all the information in here can be found on the internet right now. So um, Kevin's book is full of really cool information. The morphs, though, are outdated because this was, I don't remember how old this book is, 10, 10 plus years. So it doesn't have any of the new morphs and it's got some stuff that we found out about some of the morphs that, that is different that's in this book because at the time that Kevin wrote it, we didn't know that about that specific gene, allelic genes, things like that. But uh, it's got good information, but you can look at Kevin's videos. He's got fantastic videos online um, uh, and a unique style because he's got, uh, he's got Donnie who's, who's making the videos for him and uh, they've got entertaining information and, and really good ball python and other reptile information. So I like books though because to me, sitting and reading a book is a lot more relaxing than looking at a screen. So even though I can find the information, I just, I like to have hard copy books. So books aren't bad, they're just sometimes outdated. I got a new snake out, this is Lydia Dietz. And I realized in pulling Lydia out that I didn't introduce Ron uh, when I had him out earlier. And people are gonna ask me, so Ron is an inchy spot nose asphalt. He's gonna make some lovely freeways in the future. And Lydia Dietz is a clown het pied she is gonna make some lovely clown pies in the future. Let's talk about some not reliable places to get information. Now you could end up with good information uh, from these, but it's a little sketchy. Number one, pet stores. Uh, I've talked about this in other videos. Generally, employees of pet stores are not reptile experts. They are oftentimes just people who needed a job and they like dogs. Or maybe it's a reptile um, place, you know, and they've hired some kid right out of high school or still in that is a sort of specialist in the one reptile that they have in their bedroom, but um, might not have the right information for you. I don't think I've ever heard of somebody coming out of a pet store with, with their new snake and a bunch of accurate information on how to care for, for it. It's always wrong information. So pet stores, number one. Uh, number two would be random people in Facebook groups. So people oftentimes ask their questions in a Facebook group and you're getting answers from like anybody. Here's, here's the worst example. There is, I'm not going to name the group, but there is a Facebook group that is just uh, a general snake group, not snake keeping, not any specific species keeping, but just are you someone anywhere in the world that has an interest in snakes in general? Um, it's a cool little group because people post pictures of snakes that they find and they ask what, what kind of snake it is and people will post things about cobras or whatever. Um, but many of the people in this group are afraid of snakes and they're just fascinated. Uh, they've never kept and would never keep a snake, but people still go on and go, hey, my ball python isn't eating, what do I do? And they get the craziest information from people all over the world just wanting to type something, just randomly guessing at, at something, you know? Um, so that's probably the worst case scenario, but if it's a ball python specific group, it's not gonna be full of experts. You're gonna have a small handful of experts. And so the way to weed through all that is you've gotta read a lot of these posts and figure out who it is, who, who's the admin? Does the admin know what they're talking about? Um, it, or even if the admin doesn't, it doesn't really matter if it's the admin I, or not, I guess, but um, who are the people or person in that group that's giving the really good solid information, not just random guesses. So that takes a little bit of time to weed through. This is, this is all a process. It's the same with just weeding through the internet in general and weeding through the, the uh, YouTube pages. You know, who is giving good information based on uh, information that you're finding elsewhere. You know, you can sort of compare and contrast and figure that out. Uh, but don't take random information from random people. And just generally people who don't keep ball pythons and are, and are guessing. I mean, that happens a lot. There are people that keep other type of reptiles or other type of snakes that think they understand a ball python, but there are some special things about ball pythons that are different from, you know, Kribos and boas and other types of snakes. 
So somebody that's a snake expert is not necessarily a ball python expert. Okay, now I'll just list off the top of my head some of the channels that I think are really good. I'm just gonna do channels. I'm not gonna talk about forums or anything like that, but uh, channels that I can think of right now that are really good. So let's talk general reptiles that sometimes get into ball pythons. Snake Discovery, obviously, is fantastic. You should all be watching Snake Discovery. Um, uh, Clint's Reptiles, Clint is great, love him. Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles has awesome information and fun to watch. Um, I mean, all of these are fun to watch. Uh, who else? I had somebody else in, in my brain. Oh, uh, Camp Kennan is great. Nerd is great. I mean, I, I watch a lot of general reptile stuff. Um, but Camp Kennan is really fun to watch. And then obviously uh, Nerd has good information. Um, now let's go ball python specific. So as far as vlog stuff, uh, Always Evolving Pythons is really good. Brian Cusco is an awesome guy to watch. His, his stuff is not just ball pythons, but it's a lot of ball pythons. Um, and, then, uh, and then let's go just information. Um, Rich at Predator BP has great information, especially for beginner ball python owners and beginner breeders. He's got good stuff. Um, uh, let's stay in the UK. Gavin from Balls to You uh, has really good information. Let's stick with that accent, but go out of the UK into Malaysia and talk about Rob from Royal Balls. He's got some really great scientific information. He's a really smart guy. Um, and then let's see, who are we talking about in the United States? My mind just went blank. JKR, J Justin Kabelka, has really great videos and he's been doing videos for years and years, but really great information. Um, Ozzy just started doing videos again. Ozzy Boyd, he's, he's doing some cool stuff. Um, more about sort of the business of, of ball python breeding, but really good information. And uh, if you know Ozzy, he's got incredible snakes. And then if you want to research morphs, I mean, really all these guys have good information on morphs. Um, but other than just cruising morph market, Garrick DeMeyer's videos are always like looking at his new clutches and he produces a gregillion snakes a year. That's a, that's a number. I've bought a couple from him. Uh, he's a great breeder and his videos are always just full of his newest clutches and, and it's cool combos to watch. So that's a good one. There's a ton of others, you guys, if I didn't mention a channel, it's not because I don't like that channel. It's because I'm just going off the top of my head right now. So, um, I'm sure that I'm going to post this and then I'm going to go, Oh man, I can't believe I didn't mention that other channel. But, uh, anyway, tell me in the comments, what channels you like that you think has really great, accurate information. And, um, you know, I love on my channel in the comment section, how positive everybody's been. And I'm really hoping to keep that up. Uh, so, you know, if somebody mentions a forum or a channel that they like, but you don't like it, that's okay. No big deal. No need to, no need to flame other channels or flame other forums or, you know, things like that. So, Let's keep it positive. Just tell me who you like. Uh, don't worry about who you don't like. No big deal. Um, okay, Kent, do you have anything to add? About what? I stopped listening after we did Kent's Corner. I know. Hey, you guys, thanks for watching. Uh, hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. And, uh, you know, if you're watching a couple of these, hit subscribe as well. I would really appreciate it. It helps out the channel a lot. Thanks so much for watching. <laughs>